Alright guys, I am back with my third Q&A video. This is my 700th video on YouTube. Um, can't even believe I've got this many videos, but at my 500th video I wanted to do a Q&A and I figured every 100 videos I would do another one. So this is my third one. I want to say thank you for all the great questions. Um, there's a lot of them here, so I'll probably be uploading this video in parts like I did with the second Q&A. Um, if I just go the full, like, three hours or whatever, the video ends up being two hours, two and a half, something like that, uh, like the first and second Q&A, trying to upload it in one piece is just insane. And it usually fails multiple times for some reason, so it's just a lot easier for me to upload it in parts. But I'm going to try and do as many as I can right now for the first part. Um... Jersey one two three six one are going are you gonna go to a TNA wrestling show bound for glory show uh, I would go to a bound for glory show if they came close to my area and it was reasonable um, I probably will go to a WrestleMania before I go to a bound for glory show just because I'm trying to go to WrestleMania 30 for next year um, but yeah, I would love to go to a TNA show. It doesn't even have to be Bound for Glory. Any TNA show I would go to. It just depends on price and how close they are. Fun at the ROH show. Have you... Young Buck 445 have you ever met a subscriber in real life or has someone recognized you from YouTube? No, I've never met a subscriber... I don't know if anyone's recognized me from YouTube. I have gone to some ROH shows, and I do the ROH TV show every single week, so I'm sure some people may have recognized me, but no one's ever come up to me or said anything. And I see there's a lot of comments removed for this Q&A, and I just want to let you guys know that sometimes on my videos I'll see a lot of comments removed, and I don't want anyone to think I remove comments. I am not the one removing these comments. Those are the people who posted those comments. I do not delete people's comments. I don't care what you say, it's fine. Unless it's just some blatant troll attempt like uh, this guy is gay or something like that. And even then, I don't think I would remove it. Uh, Godson 92 who would you say is the biggest disappointment in the WWE in terms of potential ability and drawing power um, the biggest disappointment I guess uh, Randy Orton's pretty disappointing because I, I do think he has a lot of ability and he could have some great matches but I feel like he's gotten really lazy. And it's not all his fault. I think a lot of it is the gimmick really sucks. Um, and he doesn't like being this babyface viper character anymore. Um, it's not necessarily that the gimmick sucks. It's just I think he's just bored with being a babyface and would much rather be a heel and WWE refuses to give him a heel turn. And he hasn't really been drawing. I mean... When he was the champion on SmackDown, they had low ratings. When it was Mark Henry, the ratings went up. I hate having to lean up so close, but I can't see these from far away. Uh, Josh Stammer. Hey, man, there are three matches I don't care to see at Mania. The Shield versus Big Show, Randy Orton, and Sheamus. Big E and Dolph versus Team Hell No. And the match with Brodus Tensai and the Funkadactyls versus Rhodes Scholars and the Bellas. Which didn't happen. I see Tensai and Brodus going over Team Rhodes Scholars and I feel bad for Cody Rhodes. What do you think about these three matches of Mania? Um, actually, the matches ended up being pretty good. The tag match was okay and the Shield, Big Show, Orton, Sheamus match was pretty good. But I did think the build towards these matches kind of sucked. The Shield versus Big Show, Orton and Sheamus match to me really felt like, hey, these guys are our stars. They got to be on Mania uh, somewhere, so let's just throw them into a match with the Shield. And of course, Dolph and Big E versus Team Hell No was just thrown on, I think, a couple weeks before Mania. So 
Uh, Mania did have kind of just a thrown together feel this year, but I still enjoyed the show for the most part. Hunter Bunniger. Um, can you do a review of IWA King of the Death Match 1995? Well, I was thinking IWA Mid South King of the Death Match at first, which would be impossible since they didn't start doing death matches until 97, 99, I believe. But you're you must be talking about the Cactus Jack Terry Funk King of the Death Match, and I've seen that so many times. I may try to do a video on that in the future, but uh, I don't know when I would do that. It is a good show, though. Um, Wrestling Fortune 44. Three questions here. If you could be in a tag team with any wrestler from any company at any point in time, who would it be and what would be the name? Um, any wrestler from any company. At any point in time, I think it would have been awesome to be tag team partners with Raven in ECW when he was the champion before he went to WCW. But it would also be really cool to be a part of the NWO or something like that. So I would have to say, and you got Sabu, man, that was that was just such a great era of wrestling. But I would say Raven, and we would call ourselves the, uh, Untouchables. <laughs> Undesirables. <laughs> Number two, what would you do if I came to your house with front row seat tickets to WrestleMania and you could only go with me if you did ten jumping jacks while balancing a glass of water? Well, that sounds impossible, but I would definitely try for front row seat tickets to WrestleMania. I mean, those things have to cost a fortune. Three, if you could run WWE and TNA for a while, for a whole year, how would you make it better? Uh, with TNA, I would get rid of Hogan. I wouldn't get rid of him necessarily. He could still have an on-screen role, just not so much involvement in the angles. Just book some matches like Teddy Long and be gone. That's all you got to do. If I could run, uh, well, I mean, there was other things I would do. I would definitely push the X Division more, um, push guys like Aries Rude, Daniels Kazarian, um, those types of things. Maybe plan out the storylines a little bit further in advance so I'm not stuck looking like a jackass when things don't make sense. And with WWE, I would push... WWE's been doing a good job pushing guys like The Shield, but I would also try to have more direction for some of my mid-card guys. Like Cesaro, I feel they don't have any direction with him. Um, Cody Rhodes, Sandow. And I don't understand the logic behind signing all these NX guys to NXT from Ring of Honor, like Generico, and um, then they're getting Sammy Callahan from Dragon Gate USA. They got Pac from Dragon Gate. They got Chris Hero from Ring of Honor. They got uh, Brody Lee, who I first saw in CZW. They have some great talent. What are they going to do with all these guys? They don't even have time for Cody Rhodes and Damian Sandow to have a match at WrestleMania, as it is. So what do they plan to do with all these talented wrestlers? God knows they can't add another show. Jesus, with the Raw, SmackDown, Main Event, and all this other crap going on, um, they really don't need to add any more wrestling during the week. I think that would just be overkill. But I would definitely try to build up some of the mid-card guys. Um, when you have a guy like Dolph who's awesome, I don't see the need to bury him when it's clear they don't have to. Look what they did with Big E on Monday Night Raw. They made Big E win a match and look strong. He had to cheat, but it wasn't blatant interference the entire match. And then he still loses. I mean, that's how they booked Dolph. And I would also cut out some of the comedy. And I understand it's PG, so some comedy's fine. But it doesn't need to be... Just thrown in your face all the time with this stupid great Kali stuff and then 
uh, maybe tone back the social media voting for matches. If you're going to rig the match to where the poll is Kali, R-Truth, and Randy Orton, and you're basically telling everyone that the match is going to be Randy Orton winning the poll because you put them up against two jabronis, I mean, why even have the poll in the first place? Um, ENC98 TV. Q&A question. I'm sure you've talked about this before, but I just found your channel. So who is your favorite wrestler? Uh, one of my favorite wrestlers is Shawn Michaels. I was a big fan of Raven. I was a big fan of Sabu. I really liked the Necro Butcher. Um, one of my favorites is Davey Richards. Um, but yeah, Necro Butcher. Probably my favorite deathmatch wrestler. And, oh man, who else? I really like the Briscoe Brothers. Um, who else was I a big fan of growing up? I was a big fan of The Ultimate Warrior. And I liked Bret Hart. But yeah, it's really hard for me to pick just one favorite. I'd have to say I was always a really big Raven fan, though, up until he went to WWE and uh, they kind of buried him when Chris Jericho called him Raisin. Uh, CM Brothers. Hey, man, if this could happen, who do you think would win in a Falls Count Anywhere match, Undertaker or Freddy Krueger at WrestleMania 29? Uh, Taker versus Freddy Krueger. Well, it would have to be a gimmick match, obviously, so Undertaker's dead. So if Freddy kills him, he's just going to come right back. So I would say Freddy would... You couldn't really have a winner, but... Um, I guess Freddy would just repeatedly kill the Undertaker, haunting his dreams. And Taker would just keep coming back to life. Two, what would you say if Yoshitatsu beat The Undertaker at WrestleMania? I would say Yoshitatsu just got one hell of a push. Three, have you ever been in a fight, and if you have, did you win or lose? Um, any fight is usually just turned into a wrestling around type of thing. It's never really been punches thrown. Um, it'll usually just be... Uh, an argument when I was younger and then we kind of just roll around wrestling each other. Four, can you do a Saw series reviews because that's a really great movie. I do plan to do the Saw series in the future for sure. Um, I got about three other series I want to do before then though. But that's one a lot of people have been asking about is the Saw series. Owen the Talkinator. One, if Jason Voorhees was put into a Saw game, do you think he would succeed or fail? Well, he would probably fail the game because I don't think Jason can reason and be like, oh, got to get this lock and open these things before some timer goes off. I don't think he would understand that. However, at the same time, he would probably end up succeeding anyways just because he can take the damage. Two, did you like the show Hey Arnold that used to be on Nickelodeon? Um, it was okay in the first couple of seasons. I kind of got out of it after that, uh, just because I was a, a big fan of Nickelodeon when I was younger, and it was Ren and Stimpy, Rocco, Doug. Um, you got Ren and Stimpy, Rocco, Doug, Rugrats, uh, those types of shows. And then as I got older, they started bringing in some other good shows like I Real Monsters. Angry Beavers and Hey Arnold, but around the time Cat Dog came out, I was uh, kind of over Nickelodeon. Three, what do you think about Justin Bieber? I don't care what he does. I mean, I don't listen to his music or anything, but he doesn't really bother me. Four, what is your favorite show and least favorite show? Um, I got a lot of favorite shows right now. I'm watching. Let me see what I have on the DVR. Um, <clears throat> I got a lot of Unsolved Mysteries episodes. So i kind of been watching those now that they've been playing the marathons of Unsolved Mysteries again, which is great. And I was trying to watch Dragon Ball Z Kai, but the Toon Nick or whatever the channel is keeps switching up the, 
the uh, the story arcs. So it'll jump from like Cell to Frieza. So I can't even watch that anymore. But I got a lot of favorite shows. Favorite of all time, Married with Children. Um, stuff I like to watch now though is typically just older stuff like Unsolved Mysteries. I'll record a bunch of episodes on. And least favorite show. One show that I just can't stand and I always turn the channel when it comes on is The Nanny. So I'll be up late watching King of Queens or something like that and then it'll turn to The Nanny and I just I cannot stand that show. And what's weird is the channels that'll play old stuff like King of Queens, Everybody Loves Raymond, stuff I actually will watch. Both channels will play the nanny at the same time, so I get double screwed and can't watch anything because of these nanny marathons. Death of PGTV. If you were writing the script for a crossover between your two favorite horror movie icons, who would they be? Who would be the protagonist? How would you combine their stories? Um, oh man, I gotta really think about this one. If you were writing the script for a crossover, um, I guess you could do something with the Texas Chainsaw family meeting the House of a Thousand Corpses family, the Devil's Rejects. And you could combine the stories by having the Devil's Rejects, not the House of a Thousand Corpses so much, but the Devil's Rejects, Otis, Baby, Captain Spaulding, they could be traveling through the desert, they're on the run from the cops, and they run into the Leatherface family or the Sawyer family, whatever you want to call them. And they don't, at first they kind of get along, but then they realize that these people want to kill them too, so it's a big struggle and they have this huge fight with the families. Um, I think that would be pretty cool actually. That's just off the top of my head. I, <laughs> I can't really go into any more detail than that. I'd be sitting here thinking about it too long. Um, number two, top five favorite kill scenes of all time. A lot from Hellraiser. Is Hellraiser, I think there's one person who gets ripped apart by chains. Um, the dentist had a really gruesome kill scene that... I can't remember if it was a kill scene, but it's always disturbed me where he's grinding a person's teeth because I hate going to the dentist and the dentist is a cheesy ass horror movie villain but those movies always bothered me just because it would get really close on the mouth and show him like destroying teeth so that was brutal um, the scene in Saul Saul 2 where the guy goes into the uh, furnace and he's trying to get the key or something and the furnace cuts on and he burns alive and the others are listening to it and he slaps his hand on the glass and that was just really a hardcore brutal scene um, another great kill scene is when Leatherface opens the door hits the guy with the hammer and just slams the freezer back uh, from the original Texas Chainsaw that was a sick kill scene um, Maybe, uh, I'm trying to think of a Jason kill scene that was really good. I always liked the scene, I can't remember what movie it is. It was Jason 9, I think, Jason Goes to Hell, where he's in a human body, and he walks into the diner and just elbows this fat woman, and her face just gets crunched in, just indented. Uh, that was always a really brutal kill scene. I could just, so many in all these horror movies. Wishmaster has some great ones too. Turning that woman who wants to be beautiful forever into a mannequin. Three, which WWE superstar diva do you think would be good in an existing horror movie franchise? Uh, 
who would be good? You could probably put Brodus Clay, Kane, any of the really big guys in a Texas Chainsaw movie and just put the Leatherface mask on them, and they could do that. I think they could pull that off. A diva? Um, I'm going to say A.J. Lee just because at this point I could watch A.J. Lee in anything. Uh, Preakin Boy 10 What ROH show Where do you live um, <clears throat> The ROH show I went to on this video Was Well you probably know by now because you've seen the Review I did of it Was the war show in Asheville, North Carolina Brian Games Master You rather have sex With your mom or sister If you have one and will you have a life with no internet electronics or a life with no teeth? <laughs> okay. I'm going to have to read this a different way. Would you rather have sex with your mom or sister if you have one? Um, neither. I would kill myself. If I was at gunpoint, I would just take the bullet. And would I rather live with no internet and electronics or live with no teeth? I think I would rather live with no teeth and just gum that shit than have no internet or electronics. TV Girl, um, More Hills Have Eyes reviews. Now my question, your thoughts on how The Rock balances WWE appearances in his film career? <clears throat> I think The Rock does a good job. I think a lot of fans get really pissed off and they always say, oh, The Rock's the champion and he's not on the show every week and he's always gone and he just comes back and he beats the younger guys. I don't see what the big deal is because at least The Rock is trying to do this and I think he really does care about wrestling. It's really not all about money because why else would he come back? He doesn't have to work on the road. He doesn't have to beat his body up. He can act in movies and make tons of money. He does not have to come back to the WWE. I think he came back because he does care about the business. And he's doing the best he can. He's got a lot of big movies coming out. And he still makes WWE, WWE appearances and gets injured trying to pull these matches off. So, I think The Rock's been doing a fine job. He's doing the best he can. Some weeks... They probably could get him to do a video promo that's already taped and show that on the shows when he's not there, um, back when he was the champion. But other than that, you can't really blame The Rock for that. That's all WWE. Rob Gold. For movie reviews, will you do Nightmare on Elm Street? Um, yes. Also, when it comes to matches, who do you think would win, Punk or Kurt Angle? I think if you're talking kayfabe, then Kurt Angle would easily destroy CM Punk. But if you're talking what's best for business, then Angle should put Punk over. K&A Gaming HD. How should WWE improve Raw and SmackDown? Um, they could improve SmackDown by cutting out some of the recaps. They don't need to recap Raw and SmackDown. Maybe mention it but they don't have to sit there and show an entire freaking 15 minute segment. Um, they already have tons of commercials on SmackDown. It gets way more commercials than Raw. So, cut out the recaps and try to do stuff to make SmackDown feel special that it's not just the Raw B show. And things are actually happening on SmackDown that you're not going to see on Raw. Still, they can show maybe some really important stuff on Raw that happened on SmackDown, but not everything. you got to get people to want to watch SmackDown because they don't know what's going to happen on that show. No one cares to see SmackDown now because they know nothing major is going to happen. And with Raw... Oh, man. Um, just try to improve the quality of the matches. When you have a three-hour show and it's already a chore to get through, you got to keep it entertaining and exciting and maybe have some better matchups, um, give the good matches more time, which they have been doing. The Shield match on Raw was insane. I mean, that lasted 20 minutes or something like that. So maybe just improve the matchups and things. And I really don't see why they're even using tons of funk at this point. 
and maybe cut out some of these damn social media things and WWE app things. I mean, that's just insane to me. Nick Glenn, there's a bunch of questions here. How do you think this WrestleMania will compare to last one's card? Will it be the same, worse, or better? Um, before I saw the show, I can't remember what I thought. I, I guess I thought it was going to be better. And it was. It was better than last year's. It still should have been better than what it was, based on the card alone. It's just they did a shitty job building it up. Who's your favorite Japanese wrestler? Mine's Great Muda. Um, I'm a big fan of Big Japan because I like the death matches. And my favorite Japanese wrestler is Jun Kasai, but I also like Abdullah Kobayashi. Just a lot of the deathmatch guys over there. The segment on Raw with Cena and Rock during, doing the Hall of Fame panel. It seemed that they were teasing a heel turn for Cena. Is this just to throw us off, or will Cena turn heel at Mania? Well... I guess we all know the answer to that one. He's not going to turn heel. And I didn't think he would. I mean, it didn't surprise me at all. It would have been really cool if he did, but, yeah, I mean, I didn't expect them to turn him heel. Who is your favorite deathmatch wrestler? Uh, Necro Butcher, but close second would be Zandig. Um, tons of guys. J.C. Bailey was a great deathmatch wrestler. Wife Beater, Nick Gage, just... Madman Pondo used to be really good, but I, I have to go with Necro Butcher. No one was ever as crazy as Necro. Have you heard of the Knife Game Song Challenge? If so, what are your thoughts? Let me pause this and go check it out. 